Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we'll be comparing the all new Hummer EV to the Rivian R1T. Now, I know that this might seem like a strange comparison because the Hummer is obviously in a size category above the Rivian R1T. The Rivian R1T kind of being like a mid sized truck, whereas the Hummer EV is kind of like a half ton sized truck. But both trucks at this point have a pretty similar MSRP fully loaded. And so now we have to ask, if you're gonna spend six figures on electric pickup trucks, should you go Rivian or should you go with GM? Before we get into the video though, as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get right into it. So starting with the R1T, you guys can see the little buttons you can press there to open up like the charging port and all and the uh, frunk as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but notice here with the opening there, it doesn't open there on the front, it's just there on the top portion with the frunk. Now it's pretty decent from a storage pace perspective. I know that it's kind of difficult to tell on camera just how big things are. So the R1T is similar in size to like a mid-sized truck. And so the storage space you could fit like a few duffel bags, basic, maybe like a couple duffel bags there in the front. So again, it's practical and uh, most pickup trucks, right? Since they have engines in the front, don't even have that storage space. So it's cool that it has it. Um, but you do have to just remember, it's not massive. Like the Ford F-150 Lightning, for example, that has like the biggest frunk for an electric vehicle, well, electric truck, I should say. Um, but at least it has it. Now, I love how I like use the loading there for the ports. It's like, and closed. So stylistically with the R1T, I think they did a really good job on the styling, frankly. It's just a really good looking uh, truck from a front end perspective, side perspective, and rear perspective, as you guys will see. It just has this cool kind of like futuristic design. And every single time I see them on road, they, they always pop out quite a bit. I instantly know, oh, there we go. There is an R1T. Uh, so it definitely has the road presence that you'd want uh, with you know a vehicle like this right especially with the price premiums that uh, these are going for now and also frankly with Rivian's price increase and that's why I did this comparison by the way is because these trucks are basically the same price now and we'll kind of get into that towards the end of the video anyways specs with the R1T 135 kilowatt hour battery pack 314 miles of driving range 835 horsepower, 908 pound-feet of torque, four electric motors, one per wheel, so you can do cool stuff like tank turn and all that. And so this has a pretty cool uh, four-wheel drive system, all-wheel drive system, whatever you want to call it. Again, it's got an electric motor per wheel. But moving from that to the Hummer, you guys can see you've got a pretty traditional key fob, which I really appreciate, frankly. One of the things that I hate about a lot of new EVs is they try to do too much in terms of like new stuff. Whereas a lot of the regular OEMs, Ford and GMC, they keep things pretty normal. Now this front is quite a bit bigger. Uh, if you guys are wondering, the Hummer looks a lot bigger in photos than it does in person. It's about the size of a half ton truck. Now it's very wide, like a Ford Raptor or a Ram T-Rex. But in terms of like the length and uh, the overall like interior dimensions, and everything half ton truck is uh, the size. So you guys can see the front it has that opening there on the front portion so it definitely makes it quite a bit more practical compared to the r1t and so just from a pure storage space perspective it definitely uh, takes the cake it's definitely a bit better than the r1t and i like that you can open and close it with the simple tap of a key fob button i definitely really appreciate that now going over the styling of the hummer i am going to say that you know i wasn't a fan seeing this in pictures because of the split light design and everything where they've got like the giant led daytime running light this is hummer on it and then the headlights down below but seeing it in person completely changed my opinion on it 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 just works and frankly seeing the real life proportions also helps out because again it looks a lot bigger in video and in pictures and everything than it does in person and so when you actually see the real proportions it actually looks pretty dang good. Now you guys can see the whole light display right there, which is pretty cool. And while I'm going over a couple of these elements, I'm quickly get into some of the specs. You guys can see how it like all illuminates in a row there. So we have a thousand horsepower and then 1200 pound feet of torque. So a bit more than the R1T, but this does weigh more. It's like 9,000 pounds, like 2000 pounds more. So the power to weight ratio might be a little bit better there with the R1T. Anyways, in terms of driving range, we have 329 miles. And you guys can see those lights there on either side. And then this is the crazy thing, battery pack, 
212.7 kilowatt hours. So its battery pack is just massive, especially compared to any other EV. I love how you have those tow hooks that are like super just big and brawny there at the bottom. And then also the whole skid plate setup and everything, because again, it is an off-roader, so it just looks really cool. Uh, if you guys are uh, wondering, um, with the Hummer EV, it doesn't have a cool quad uh, electric motor setup like the R1T, so a little bit different from that perspective. It's a tri-motor setup, but still, I mean, it's still crazy. And then you guys can see here with all the components underneath, obviously got a bunch of wires dangling down because it's fully electric, but pretty beefed up again for off-road purposes and also the fact that it needs to be because it's a 9,000 pound truck. Now popping over the R1T, this is something that I think is kind of interesting with the Rivian is they don't have a traditional off-road setup from a tire and wheel perspective. They've got 20 inch wheels. Now you do have these pretty aggressive all-terrain tires and they've got a decent amount of sidewall, but the reason the wheels are so big is because the brakes are so big. If you notice with the caliper and everything there, it's tucked in pretty tight. Now the tires aren't crazy wide. I th think they're like 275 millimeters wide. I might be wrong, um, but pretty close to that. You guys saw the air suspension canister there. Notice with the Rivian logo. And then you guys can see the two-tone design with the mirror and pop out door handles, which is kind of like an EV thing, right? To help out with aerodynamic efficiency. And this is one of the keys you can get for the Rivian is the card. They also give you like a little carabiner key. Um, definitely prefer the carabiner key. Cause again, I'm, I, I like a key fob. Now you guys can see just how high this is, like 15 inches of ground clearance with the R1T, which is just absolutely insane. And that's one of the cool things about these EVs because you don't have a bunch of stuff hanging down below. Now the Hummer has a more traditional setup, 18 inch wheels and 35s. So the tires are a bit wider on this and you have quite a bit more sidewall again because of the smaller wheels that definitely helps out quite a bit. And I think it just has a cool off-roader appearance overall. I think they did a great job with the aesthetic there. And then the Hummer EV does have air suspension as well. And you guys can see here just how aggressive those tires are. I actually have the same tires on the, I'm pretty sure those are the same tires that are on the Ram T-Rex. So they last a long time, I can tell you that right now. And you guys can also see um, with the little canister right there on the Hummer. And then notice there it says HEV right there. And the thing's crazy about the Hummer is, again, tons of ground clearance just like the uh, R1T. You've got 10.1 inches of ground clearance in just like your normal setting. So this has like more ground clearance than a lot of dedicated off-roads, off-roaders rather, when it's in its like lower ride height setting, which is just crazy uh, to me. And again, the side profile, I don't think it's as like flowy but it looks really cool. And if you guys are wondering, uh, max ground clearance on the Hummer before we get back in the R1T, 16 inches in the extract mode, which is just crazy. Now going into the bed area here with the R1T, um, what you guys will notice is, first off, you've got like the little tailgate that drops down here and you can see it kind of like lifts up that portion of the bed and notice, yeah, it pops up right there. And then notice the reason they did that is because this actually has a little like trunk area there. So they had to split everything up to make it so that it works. You can have like the locking mechanism and everything. You can't close it with one hand, sadly. You have to use both hands to get that fully locked into place, which I found kind of annoying. Um, now the thing I think that's interesting is the payload between both the trucks is pretty similar. They're both in like half ton, terries, half ton territory from a payload perspective. But the biggest thing is the R1T has like 10,000 pounds of towing capacity, but then the Hummer EV has like 7,500 pounds. So the R1T can tow more somehow, even though it's a smaller truck. You guys can see the tonneau cover set up. That being said though, just like other EVs, they have no towing range, right? As soon as you hook up a trailer, you lose all of your driving range. So like those 300 miles, I'm sure turns into like less than hundred miles. I mean, that's what it's been shown with other EVs. So they got the towing capacity. They'll be smooth. They'll be quick with the towing, but you get no driving range. So just keep your tow trips nice and short. Now finishing things up with the rest of the rear. Again, really cool with the overall design there with the light bar. Notice the R1T logo. And then you guys can see here, that's all smooth down below. Um, if you guys are wondering, both of them have independent suspension front and rear. That's just an EV thing. It doesn't make sense to have, especially with a quad electric motor setup, doesn't make sense to have solid axles like that. Just, yeah, you'd be hurting yourself at that point. And you notice this one has the roof rack too. Now you've got the gear tunnel, which is something that I've kind of commented on in a bunch of videos. It works sometimes, it doesn't work all the time. So notice how I press the button. You have to press the button there on the bed to fully unlock it. It, for some reason from the touchscreen doesn't fully unlatch everything, which I've found to be kind of annoying. 
But you guys can see there um, with that little storage space cubby. And then it's cool that it does have it. Like Rivian's done everything they can to make this as practical as possible from like a storage space perspective, considering the fact that again, it's a mid-size truck ultimately. And so I really appreciate that they've gone to great lengths to make it so that there's a ton of usable storage space to make up for the lack of size with the truck. Same thing, right? Have to press the button to unlatch that, which is, yeah, I don't know. Either it's just like, uh, you know, design flaw or something, I don't know. But anyways, you can see the first aid kit and then again, with the whole gear tunnel setup, at least those are easy to close. Now the Hummer you guys are gonna notice has a more traditional bed setup. So if you guys have ever been in a new GM truck, then this is gonna look pretty dang familiar to you. And notice you got like the roll up tunnel cover set up and then you guys can see with the grab handle right there. And then notice this does have the multi pro tailgate. So it's hard to find the button here cause it's on the side versus in the middle like on other GM trucks, which is kind of annoying. But you got the whole bed step or tailgate step system, which I think is pretty cool. 375 pound weight limit on it. And it's pretty easy to get up. You just, you just click that part in the place. What I found is the easiest and then just roll up the rest. all kind of doing like a bicep curl almost. And then you can get the rest of the tailgate up. Now in terms of the rear styling with the Hummer again, boxy, right? Now I think that the SUV is going to be the one that people ultimately end up liking more because that's what happened with the previous generation is they had a pickup truck in the SUV and it seems like the SUV is a lot more popular uh, just because I think that these boxy looks, they look okay with a pickup truck, but they don't look great, right? Whereas with the SUV, the styling looks amazing, right? Think Jeep Wrangler, Ford Bronco, Mercedes G-Wagon, Land Rover Defender, right? But with the pickup truck, it just kind of... Um, I don't know, it almost makes the bed look kind of stubby or something. But I do think overall that GM did a really good job with the styling on the Hummer EV. Now popping over to the R1T, something that I've been really impressed with with the R1T is just the interior fit and finish. I think they did a really good job with the material use with the R1T. And again, fit and finish is amazing. I haven't found like a single issue um, on the interior, at least with an R1T with the interior quality. I think they did a really good job with the materials, with how they mix things together. Uh, overall, just a really good setup. Now, again, you gotta remember mid-sized truck, so it's got an okay amount of seating capacity, but it's not like massive by any means. At least get your own climate controls back there. Cup holder armrest. And again, just look at like all the materials and everything. Everything just looks really nice and feels sturdy too. That was the other thing I noticed about the R1T is everything just feels really sturdy uh, and well put together. So Rivian's definitely done a good job with that. And then you guys can see here with the grab handles, again, another kind of like cool point inside. And then going from that over to the Hummer, what you guys will notice here is again, full size pickup truck. So you can see there with the dimensions and everything. I do like this uh, first edition or edition one, whatever they call it. I think it's edition one, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. I do like the white theme because again, it's like the lunar theme. It's pretty cool. And you can see that continues there to the seats. Notice there with the storage space behind. Again, I think that uh, it, tons of practicality added to it. And that's obviously another GM trucks. And then you got flat loading floor. Um, but the big benefit here of the Hummer is Tons of legroom. Again, it's half ton truck cab, and so it's just really spacious in the rear. And then you guys can see down below there with the storage space, and then notice with the climate controls in the rear, and then also the heated seats as well. And then you guys can see there with the cup holder armrest set up. And then I love how you've got like the glass panels. Now with the Hummer, you can take off the roof just like a Ford Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler, which kind of adds to the fun adventure factor of the Hummer EV. And I'm sure people won't actually take it off road, but you know, at least you got the ability to take the top off while you're driving on road. Anyways, you guys can see again, fit and finish and quality there with the front door panel. The R1T is also fantastic, just like the rear. And I love the stitching all throughout. Notice there, kind of with the center portion of the little circles. And then the pedals actually look really nice and even the dead pedal too. And yeah, I just, everything looks really, it's like tight. It's like really tight. There's no, um, I don't know, like jiggles in the interior. And then with the steering wheel, um, this is another thing that is pretty cool. Again, minimalist in design. It does control different 
function similar to like what Tesla does. It seems like every EV automaker is doing that where you press a button and then it's like, okay, then your steering wheel adjusts this. And I get it like the minimalist design, but I kind of also just like physical buttons that control different things. So I can just be like shortcut, 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 rather than I'm going to go into the infotainment system, press a button, press another button, and then I finally get to adjust something. And all that shows you your efficiency. None of these EV trucks initially coming out are going to actually be efficient. It's going to take some time and some technology improvements for them to really be super efficient, which is pretty cool. And notice how it lets you know where you have to touch the key to get everything started up and going, which is, again, similar thing to what Tesla has. I just, I know that there's people, have, I've, I've had people comment down below. They're like, oh, no, it's the best thing ever. I just have it in my wallet. And I'm like, I, I get that, but I like keys. <laughs> I like just walking into a car and just it starts up because i'm a key right I, I don't like having to deal with the card situation that's just yeah not not my jam um camera system on the r1t is pretty good um some people have complained about the resolution and the lack of camera views which i can definitely understand on that but it's not a massive truck and so i don't really care that it doesn't have like the best state-of-the-art camera system if it was bigger i would be a little bit more annoyed but it's so small that it's like ah whatever then of course you got the gear guard, which I have seen in action. It's pretty cool to see the little like guy just sitting there on the screen because I saw an R1T parked on the side of the road. Now I love the customization of the drive modes and it tells you how much ground clearance you have with the different uh, air suspension settings. And then obviously with the different drive modes that you go into, it'll change the air suspension as well. There's tons of different off-road modes. And I've seen quite a few videos now of the R1T off-road. Sadly, Rivian doesn't like me probably because I, um, well, am honest about the product, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't been able to take one off road, but I've seen people take them off road and it, it's pretty awesome. The stuff they can do, like it's an extremely capable vehicle. Like when you hear pickup truck, 7,000 pounds, 20 inch wheels, you don't think that this would be able to handle the stuff that it can handle. But again, the engineering is amazing and they've actually been able to, I don't know, somehow make it so this truck can do quite a bit. And then you guys can see here with the controls there for the dual zone climb system, heated cold seats, you know, all the normal stuff that you expect in a expensive luxury truck. Um, and then they do the same thing with as Tesla's. Everything's in the screen though. So like even like the volume control right there, which again, I just am not a fan of. Um, I want physical buttons for stuff like heated cold seats, volume control, steering wheel adjustment, mirror adjustment, fan adjustment, like stuff like that that you're gonna kind of regularly do. Uh, I do think this is pretty cool that you've got like a speaker there that you can take out so you can go and have some fun out in the woods, uh, right? Jamming to some music. And then you guys can see there with the center console. And then no glove box. I've still thought this is so weird to understand why. Um, yeah, just strange. No, it's got the Rivian logo right there. And then again, you guys can see the rest of the fit and finish just looks fantastic. And then with the headliner, definitely a nice premium uh, headliner here with the Rivian. And then quickly pricing. Initially, it was like $70,000, $80,000 for a loaded up Rivian, depending on exactly how you spec it out. Now it's like $110,000. And then used ones are going for over $100,000 with the Rivian. And then popping over to the Hummer, again, you've got that two-tone design. Notice with the memory seats. And again, a lot of switch gear from other General Motors products. So again, physical buttons that just make sense that are easy to use which again i kind of prefer the frameless windows is because you can take off the top if you guys are wondering um, they obviously could have gone the jeep or bronco route where they have framed windows but they decided to go frameless because it probably was a little bit easier to uh, implement that whole setup now the other thing to note about the hummer seats and the overall fit and finish of the hummer ev is it definitely it doesn't feel as tight as the r1t which surprises me because you know gm has been around for such a long time but definitely the more like a jiggly loose feeling interior if that makes sense and you guys can see a lot of the plastics and everything um, but obviously that is for you know cost saving measures and all that kind of stuff and i guess frankly one benefit of that is it's probably going to be easier to find uh, replacement parts so and let's take that all into account anyways you guys can see here with the whole steering wheel setup notice we got the little regen button there Cruise control on the steering wheel. Again, we've got a bunch of physical buttons. Super Cruise as well with the Hummer EV, which is pretty cool. Um, I've tested it out in a few cars and well, yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> You've got the HEV logos yet again. And then notice the stitching there on the center portion. 
And then you guys can see the turn signal stock and then notice the windshield wiper stock. And then here is the center gauge cluster. Um, and uh, something I quick want to mention here um, before we kind of move on more is pricing. I know we kind of talked about at the end of the Rivian segment and it says 350 mile, 54 miles of range, which is kind of strange. The Hummer EV was originally supposed to be like a 120,000 ish dollar vehicle, but these on the used market are selling for 220, $240,000. They are down from $350,000. And so the used market on the Hummer EVs is definitely quite a bit more aggressive than the R1Ts because the R1Ts are selling for over original MSRP, but not nearly as much as what the Hummers are going for um, in terms of the used market. But hypothetically, if you happen to have been lucky enough or smart enough to order one of these right when they came out, then you could get it for like the 100, I think it's like $120,000 MSRP roughly. Camera system's way better. It's got the full 360 camera view on it. And yeah, you guys can see that resolution also fantastic with that 360 camera view. Um, and I guess one more thing I want to mention on the pricing is that I guess that that kind of shows the market's like excitement behind both of the vehicles, right? If vehicles can be going for way, way more over sticker, then that means there's a bit more demand for that vehicle. But then also they haven't produced a ton of the Hummer EVs yet. So we'll see what happens when there's more on the streets, what the values end up looking like. Now, Tons of different uh, driving modes and everything, and notice all the different bits of info you can see. Uh, so, you know, I will say that the Hummer's infotainment system is a little bit easier to use because, again, it's just like a regular GM infotainment system. And so I think that they did just a better job um, in terms of the overall setup. It just feels a little bit normal. Now, I'm not saying that Rivian's infotainment system is bad because it's got really good response time. Um, screen looks great. Like, they did a good job, but I don't know. I just... I liked using the Hummer infotainment system a little bit more. It just felt a little bit more user friendly. And frankly, there's, um, I don't know, that shortcut bar there on the side, which it just all makes sense. And then the drive mode animation is pretty cool with the Hummer EV with the different modes. Uh, notice that you've got your different off-road modes, which are obviously, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of fun with the overall setup. Um, but they're going to, just like the R1T, you're going to adjust the air suspension and the throttle response and all that depending on what mode that you go into. And then you guys can see here with the climate uh, controls, notice he you do have heated and cooled seats, uh, just like the R1T. Um, and that's one thing that I don't like about the Hummer is how you adjust the seats. Like it's two different buttons. Again, I get it minimalist with the design, but it's kind of annoying. I wish they would just, just one button for the heated seats, one button for the cooled seats. It's, that's what, that's been around for a while. And, Overall, though, the toggle switch area, though, I think looks pretty cool. Now it's the heat steering wheel button there. And then you guys can see here with the locker setup, front and rear lockers. So the Rivian doesn't have to use that because it's got motors on all four wheels. But this, since it doesn't have that set up, right, it, it uses lockers to kind of make up for that. Um, but it does, I, it does have, like, it uses the motors for one set of the lockers and the other set, it's an actual traditional setup because, again, it's a tri-motor setup, right? So... They're kind of doing like, they're like half the way of what Rivian is doing with their whole setup. And then you got a radio shifter too, which is definitely appreciated. And then you guys can see with the rest of the center console setup again, mostly normal, tons of storage space with that too, which is definitely a big plus with the Hummer EV. And a material use actually looks pretty solid. Um, but again, like I said, everything doesn't feel as like, it didn't feel as tight um, as what they have with the Rivian. And then of course it says edition one over there. And I like the coloration on the dash. Now this is like the drive mode select, right? So you twist for the different modes and then you can press for like the air suspension, for example. So you can go into the different suspension settings, depending on how much ground clearance that you need out of the Hummer EV. And then you guys can see you've got your my mode set up. And then the other thing with the Hummer EV is it also has the rear steering and the crab walk as well. And I, I tested out both of them and the crab walk just feels super strange. It's a cool off-road bit of tech, but I don't think that anyone is actually going to end up using it off-road because yeah, it's it's a mall crawler ultimately at the end of the day. Anyways, notice with the glass roof there and then we've got the camera mirror as well. And then you guys can see here with the little sun visors that pop down. Overall, cool utilitarian feeling uh, interior overall. And then notice here with the stability control, 
Um, so there's a sequence where you like press it a couple of times and then that'll let you do the launch control, which is called the Watts to Freedom. And zero to 60 time with both these trucks is supposed to be identical at like three seconds. That being said, the Hummer, even though it accelerates just as quick as the Rivian, because it's so big, you don't feel the acceleration as much. So it is just as quick, but it doesn't feel as quick, if that makes sense. It's just because of the size, uh, frankly, with the trucks. Now, just to cap things off in terms of like, my decision with this comparison, here's the deal. MSRP to MSRP with current uh, MSRPs, I would choose the Hummer over the Rivian because if I was gonna have to spend $110,000 on a Rivian, which is what they cost now, roughly with the loaded up one, versus $120,000 on that Hummer, I buy the Hummer. But in terms of the used market values, I'm gonna go with the Rivian because you can pick up a Rivian now for like low 100s, whereas a Hummer, you have to spend over $200,000 and the Hummer is not two times as much vehicle, even though the demand is there with, the market says the demand is there. And so that's just kind of my opinion. MSRP to MSRP, I do prefer the Hummer, uh, but yeah. There you go, let me know which one you guys would choose.